Welcome back for part two of Jingles Garage Skid Loader 53LM7 LS Swap. Today what we're going to try to accomplish is just getting the motor mocked up in there and see if we can get the PTO shaft lined up with the crankshaft the best we can. Now to connect the two, what I'm going to use is a 1350 flywheel. Might be a 1050 actually. <laughs> It's for a small block, four, three, five, seven, even big block, six liters. And we put this plate on there. It's been precisely cut and drilled. And then I'm gonna get a one inch annular bit, drill a hole, put my shaft in there, and that will hopefully have it uh, as close to center as we can get it. Reduce vibration and premature wear. You see, we got our eBay motor mounts on there. Hopefully they line up and uh, don't have to cut too much metal for that. But first we're going to worry about getting this off the stand, get the flywheel swapped, and then stab it in there and see how she looks. Went ahead and swapped on the pressure plate. We want our custom Jenga's Garage adapter. Highly accurate, highly balanced. We're gonna see about how this baby fits. Stay tuned. This is the first fit made try, don't judge. So you can see we're hitting on our hydraulic filter here. Unfortunately. Well through this guy, I might be able to just move it to the side a little bit. It's just hydraulic hardly on that side, this side's flex, so that shouldn't be terrible. And this big guy. What I'm thinking is we just take it, flip it up, and call it good. This is all going to need a custom shroud build, regardless, but uh, those, those are hitting, that's what we got. Went through, turned these lines up, should be plenty of clearance, might eventually just make new lines, relocate these filters. So you see this one is right set up now. You see the guy stabbed in there, it's a tight fit for sure, but I actually don't fit too bad. Doing it off so it's super easy. But now what I want to do is make sure this thing is dead nuts on that pump. So what I'm gonna do is go here to where the flywheel is, you can barely see the pump. And I measure that it's six inches. So I'm gonna take a well, a six inch shaft temporarily onto the flywheel and use that to help center up. To, uh, Waiting on parts once it's all together. We got a new U joint I'm going to use to adapt it. That U joint that I ordered also has a quarter inch key on. So hopefully this thing falls down or something. You know, this engine, and even that idle is probably, you know, 80 horsepower. Stay tuned. You can see we got our engine in. Our height set where we want it. Now we think grab the straps and just as big to where you know straight. I get a set of motor mounts built. We'll go from there. Got this baby centered. Should be symmetrical on both sides. So I went ahead and made one cardboard template before I start cutting on the steel. Make one of those set in there. Check it on the other side. It's all good. And make two more. 
Let's see what it is. My neck is too bad for me. Really cool. So we have to slide the engine out. Let's come out for me. Got those halfway burned in there. Let's see what I move. That's cool. We need to do the rest of all the but then we got to make one for the front. So I don't want this thing tipping too much, and uh, you know, it's just not gonna hold it. I want to figure out something there. I want to be able to make it for adjust it side to side, up and down to really align that up. Now, for the front part of the engine mount. What I plan to do is take this here bell housing for a small block Chevy. All small block Chevy and LSs are the same as far as a bell housing pattern. Go ahead and trace it, mark my hole. I'm going to plasma cut that out by hand. Put that on there. Put one of the brackets. That would be really strong. So go by doing just two bolts, but be all four right away. So you don't know. This is a damn skill little vibration. Go ahead, cut this out. Cut the bolts on the engine. Put some more brackets on there. Rubber bushing on ice to make a vibration. Cut out the plasma. This is just some cheap one off Amazon. It actually works pretty good. Uh, the plasma is definitely something very handy. Actually, fairly inexpensive to save to have for shop. Got our top engine mount made for the front. Get the corner and make it look, make it look a little bit slicker. I pull the thing out now, weld it all in. Make sure it's all solid. Got the engine mounts all welded up. Now I'm gonna worry about the fuel. Now this is probably an overkill for this application, considering this engine is probably won't run over 2,000 RPMs. It helps save the life of the pump. I'm gonna take this bad boy. Go to holes. Bolt in right there. There's actually a decent amount of space in this machine. Got our fuel pump in there mocked up. Actually already mounted. I keep everything tucked away, everything should clear. I'm gonna move this hydraulic filter and make a bracket for it. Another big one over there. Hey, so we just cut, cut out the bottom of the transition of the bottom hood. All their changes, anyways. Here made this old one. I was able to cut down and modify and make it work. I just trim it up a little bit, make it look more show worthy. This one got cut. Looks like it might not work, but still take that check valve there. That is bolt it up to there, and then run my flex bolt line and make sure it fits the bell housing and whatnot. So we're gonna do that. But with all this, this guy, you will have to take the plasma cutter. Cut out the bottom here and make sure that baby fits. If I, do, if I ever do want to change it for some reason, probably won't though because these damn things are probably return boxes. I'm gonna cut out the bottom side of this here using a plasma cutter. It uses thermal nuclear energy, it gives you exact precise cuts. So make sure your eye protection might want. Ended up running out of fittings and whatnot to uh, finish the hydraulic system. So we have some parts for that and then once it comes in, get it all put together, got a pretty good idea of what I'll need. Should be pretty easy. Just need to make one more bracket. So that'll be the end of this episode.